Beijing is not just a mystical city, but an urban powerhouse. Now enjoy the 72-hour visa-free transit and new tax refunds on shopping for overseas travelers. Discover Beijing 4, a modern city on the rise. Saturday, July 25th at 7. Beijing. The business and financial heartbeat of China. A globally competitive hub for the economy, education, and sports. A metropolis transforming into a melting pot of Eastern and Western traditions. Where luxury shopping is expanding every day. Where worldwide sporting events have become a way of life. And where schools are embracing international interaction. This is Beijing, a modern city on the rise. In the last few decades, Beijing, one of the world's most ancient capitals, has raced towards the future at breakneck speed, transforming itself into a place many compare to New York City it has become one of the most modern, dynamic, and global cities in the world. The change that I've seen over the last 15 years, you can't even put it into words. A lot of Americans still have a perception of the old China, and this is the new China now. And as its capital, Beijing enjoys a prominent role as the symbol of China's rise and increasing global stature. Beijing is the center of international exchange. Every year, there are a lot of international meetings of great influence that have been held in Beijing. In 2014, the city hosted the heads of state from 21 countries, including President Obama, for the annual summit of the Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation, also known as APEC. The main venue for the APEC meeting was built in the Wall District, and the building with its traditional Chinese features, its functions and layout, is also up to modern standards. This international conference center was built on an environmentally protected island amongst the serene Yenchi Lake, and has since become a tourist hotspot where visitors follow in the footsteps of international leaders and snap pictures of the beautiful Yanqi Tower. I am one of the leaders who was in charge of organizing the APEC event. I am very proud to say that many leaders and heads of state have given their praise to our organization and the dinner reception. Even President Obama has praised the dinner as one of the best ever. During the APEC summit, Chinese President Xi Jinping called for efforts to fulfill a dream of better prosperity for the Chinese people and a better environment to work, grow, and live. And that vision is already coming true in Beijing. Just 25 years ago, it was unheard of for international companies to set up shop in China. And now, Beijing is home to many such businesses. There's all different types of multinational, global companies, whether they're based and started in China or they're from around the world. Today, Beijing has the most Fortune 500 companies in the world, beating out Tokyo and New York, with 52 of them headquartered here. And nearly a quarter of China's certified high-tech companies are also based here. The same type of activity that you had in the 90s in Silicon Valley, that's happening here. But it's leapfrogging the technology of Silicon Valley because mobile devices and, and cloud computing is, is a way of life here. But the city doesn't only attract businesses like Apple or IBM. Top international brands like Omega, KFC, Gap, and Nike, and even luxury labels like Rolex, Prada, and Chanel are all in Beijing. So why are these major companies flocking here? China's economy is now second only to the United States, and this growth rate is the envy of the world. 
The rise of the Chinese consumer, especially in Beijing, is currently the defining trend in global retail. 15% of all international sales of luxury goods take place in China. It's beautiful to see a middle class that can afford whatever they want. As the Chinese buyer's desire for high-end merchandise grows and the country's economy keeps developing, Beijing continues to lure major global players. The number of chic stores and of designer stores is extraordinary. Joy City, a shopping mall originally located in Beijing's commercial district of Xidan, has just opened a second branch in the Chaoyang district. With a two-floor supermarket, plenty of restaurants, and stores housing a number of popular brands. All the boutiques are there. The greatest designers make more money in Beijing than they do anywhere else. So the transformation is tremendous. And since July of 2015, international visitors can now claim tax refunds on all purchases they make across China during their visit. When you leave China, then you will get an 11% tax refund. In the past, we offered quality, inexpensive goods. We're famous for that. And now you have this policy to better enjoy the shopping experience. This policy will also encourage tourist spending and help to boost China's growing economy even further. The economy's growth is apparent in the financial sector as well. The number of international financial institutions in Beijing has doubled in recent years to about 400. And that phenomenal growth is attracting many international entrepreneurs. Beijing is a great place to become an entrepreneur. I believe the, this idea of the American dream, it exists here. If you have a good idea, and you work hard, and you're good to other people, it'll come true. I mean, without a doubt, I, I don't doubt it for a second. Everybody here, we, we feel like we're in a team, that we're here together, and that we're doing it together. In fact, expats living and working in Beijing have become a rather common sight over the past two decades. Beijing provides a lot of good opportunities for young professionals in particular. It's tough finding a job in the U.S. right now, and the Chinese marketplace is very receptive to foreign professionals that are well qualified. It's undeniable that China and Beijing have risen to economic prominence. But even more irrefutable is that Beijing, a city of millions, has now become a multicultural hub. Attracting great minds to learn from one of the world's oldest and most impressive cultures. Coming up... Going to school in Beijing is completely different from going to school anywhere else in the world. From the ancient teachings of Confucius to a modern multilingual education system. Not just a mystical city, but an urban powerhouse that you really have to see to believe. The culture itself is a really beautiful culture, and it's something to be appreciated. And there's a lot more going on than you'd ever guess. Beijing is a great place to become an entrepreneur. This is actually my first time to Beijing. Now enjoy the 72-hour visa-free transit and new tax refunds on shopping for overseas travelers. Discover Beijing 4, a modern city on the rise. Ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius has been inspiring people for centuries. But many may not know he was also a politician, editor, and above all, educator. Nobody had a greater influence in the development success of China or Confucius. Beijing's Confucius Temple, also known as Kong Miao, was built to commemorate the great sage's contributions to Chinese culture. His ideas, his logic, his philosophy, 
and most important, his ability to attract people and convince them of what he had to say made him uh, so successful and so significant. In the courtyard of the Confucius Temple is a remarkable architectural complex called the Royal College. Established in 1306, this place was used as the highest seat of learning in ancient times. It's where the royal family sent their kids to study, and it's been expertly preserved. In the centuries since Confucius, Beijing schools have grown to become some of the world's most academically challenging. Going to school in Beijing is completely different from going to school anywhere else in the world. The city's education system is vast and varied, offering private schools, cultural and vocational schools, and public schools with impressive campuses and driven students, like Isabella, Lucy, and Judith, all 12 or 13 and already applying for college. I think that education is very important in our lives because it gives us the desire to explore the world. Students can be found discussing global topics in model UN sessions or taking foreign language classes. I've learned a lot, especially my English. Well, when I was in junior high, I didn't dare to like speak, to, speak like this. Music and athletics are also very important in Beijing schools. So we don't want to be like bookworms. They show lots of sports which seem to be hard for, uh, for common people. And most institutions also ensure that students don't lose sight of their heritage by offering arts like paper cutting, Chinese knot knitting, and seal carving. This kind of art is very good to enhance Chinese confidence yeah, in our own culture. We have much international communication and students exchange programs so that students can pass traditional art to other students from different countries. In 2014, Michelle Obama and the First Lady of China, Peng Li Yuan, visited the second high school attached to Beijing Normal University. Their tour not only signified that education is on the top of the Chinese government's agenda, but that the country is welcoming more Americans and people from around the world to study in Beijing. Nowadays, more schools are doing these international programs, whether they bring in foreign students or they send Chinese students to study abroad. It's because of the development of Chinese economy. The country is attracting more foreign people. In our school, we have over 400 international students, and they are from 37 different countries. It's almost like a small United Nation here. Locals will often welcome international students into their homes, forming lifelong friendships. It's really like a brand new experience for me. A new person coming to my home, staying with me. It's like suddenly having a sister. I miss her a lot. The students are becoming more global and embracing these cultural exchanges. It's pretty fun to be here. It's very nice and the culture is, is great. I, I love it. We all welcome uh, international students and we are very, very eager to talk with them and have classes with them and be friends with them. And also, a lot of our classes are in English. All of our teachers, even our Chinese teacher, can speak English really well. And in coming here, many of these international students are picking up the local language as well. I speak English with my daddy. And I speak Chinese with my brother and mommy. Chinese, it's a great language. It's hard, but when you learn it, you feel like you're, t you're taller than everybody. Up next. I think Americans can benefit a lot from learning somewhere so different, but still somewhat the same. Beijing's globalization of education extends to its universities.
Beijing. Not just a mystical city, but an urban powerhouse that you really have to see to believe. The culture itself is a really beautiful culture, and it's something to be appreciated. And there's a lot more going on than you'd ever guess. Beijing is a great place to become an entrepreneur. This is actually my first time to Beijing. Now enjoy the 72-hour visa-free transit and new tax refunds on shopping for overseas travelers. Discover Beijing 4, a modern city on the rise. The internationalization of China's educational system in Beijing is not just happening on the primary and secondary levels. The United States Department of State has begun offering merit-based scholarships for recent high school grads who want to be a part of overseas immersion programs in China. If you're really interested in coming to Beijing, we do language class like Mandarin teaching. You can choose to come during the summer and you can try some of the classes and maybe in the end you'll end up attending a Chinese university. China now ranks fifth in the number of American college students studying there abroad. Educating over 14,000 of them last year, making China the only Asian country in the top ten. I am an exchange student here. I've been studying Chinese for two years and the best way to learn a language is immersion, so I'm here for a full year just studying Mandarin. I wanted to understand Chinese culture, Chinese language more by being here rather than trying to study it from the outside. Beijing's rise in international exchange students is thanks in part to its several national and municipal universities, many of which teach graduate level courses in English, but also because of the global melting pot the city has become. I would like to study in China. I was scared before because I thought it would just be me as an American, but I saw all these different ethnic groups, which made me feel very comfortable. I think it's really important to have a cultural exchange between the Chinese and Americans because as a student of international relations, Chinese is obviously a growing power and it's really, really important that we understand each other and don't see something as really foreign to us when really the people are really nice and willing to do everything they absolutely can to help you get around and to help you settle into China. So I think the culture itself is a really beautiful culture and it's something to be appreciated. I think Americans can benefit a lot from learning somewhere so different but still somewhat the same. The importance of China's educational system is also acknowledged by the Beijing Publishing House, a company that publishes a variety of books, like textbooks for the country's youth. Nowadays, China places a very high and broad emphasis on children's education. For this reason, the publishing of children's books has become a large business in China and there are a wide range of children's books published annually. Established in the 1950s, Beijing Publishing House has become the largest publishing group in Beijing and is doing its part in expanding Beijing's international cultural exchanges by publishing one sought-after text in particular. One of the core publications of the Beijing Publishing House is our tourism guidebook about Beijing. We also have them in English. We are striving to expand our focus on publishing more English tourism guidebooks about Beijing. We hope that more Americans can come to China, read our tourism guidebooks, and understand Beijing better. And these days, with the English language becoming so well known across Beijing, getting around the city with or without a guidebook is no longer a problem. There are also 347 tourist information centers in Beijing to provide visitors with travel information. And since 2008, all taxi drivers in Beijing are required to receive English training. 
Now, going back to Beijing, I feel that definitely more people can speak English compared to 20 years ago. Every single time I go back, I would hear people speaking English even on the bus or in the mall when I'm walking on the street, which is something that would have never happened, you know, in 1995, 1996. Coming up, the NBA's Brooklyn Nets and their dancers entertain Beijing. We're very excited to bring a little bit of the Brooklyn Borough here to China. Beijing, not just a mystical city, but an urban powerhouse that you really have to see to believe. The culture itself is a really beautiful culture, and it's something to be appreciated. And there's a lot more going on than you'd ever guess. Beijing is a great place to become an entrepreneur. This is actually my first time to Beijing. Now enjoy the 72-hour visa-free transit and new tax refunds on shopping for overseas travelers. Discover Beijing 4, a modern city on the rise. Beijing didn't need the 2008 Summer Olympics to become the global power that it's become today, but they certainly helped to shape the growth that was already happening and shot the city onto the map as one of the world's top sporting destinations, capable of hosting any number of international sports. With a capacity of over 100,000, the Beijing National Stadium, or the Bird's Nest, has today become one of the most striking structures in sports, recognized around the globe. And another world event, the 15th World Championships in Athletics, are scheduled to be held at the National Stadium in August of 2015. Right next door to the National Stadium is the Beijing National Aquatic Center, nicknamed the Water Cube. When I saw the blueprint for the Water Cube, I was so excited. It's so pretty. Covering an area of more than 200,000 square feet, the venue had a capacity for 17,000 fans for the 2000 Olympic Games swimming, diving, and synchronized swimming events. Over the past years, we have received over 24 million visitors and hosted about 180 sports and performances in these two buildings. These two venues have been thriving after the Games. With these mesmerizing venues, it's no wonder Beijing is one of the cities on the short list to host the 2022 Winter Olympics. The water cube will change to ice cube. One of the most popular sports in China today is basketball. An estimated 300 million people in the country play it, a surprise to many visitors who peg the sport as quintessentially Western. Basketball's popularity could simply be due to the diverse city that Beijing has become, or it could be thanks to the recent rise of Chinese players in the NBA. Or perhaps it's the presence of former NBA star and current member of the Beijing Ducks, Stefan Marbury, in China. Living in Beijing and being here is like I fit. I'm from New York, so I'm from a big city, and it has the same similarities from it being a big city, but Beijing is different. It's really an international market. You know, and it's growing into an even bigger international market where more and more people are starting to come to Beijing, such as New Yorkers. Which may explain why the NBA's Brooklyn Nets also have a huge presence in Beijing. 
Having participated in two preseason games in the city in 2010 and 2014, they built quite the rabid Chinese fan base. I like Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets. I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan. The Nets dancers, the Brooklyn Nets, accompanied the team on both trips to Beijing and turned more than a few heads by showcasing their signature dance style in China. This is actually my first time to Beijing, which is really cool. The fans here are showing us so much love. They're very welcoming. We're very excited to bring a little bit of the Brooklyn Borough here to China. I think it's been so exciting to see that the Brooklyn Nets are truly a global team. Just seeing people wearing the gear has blown us away. Back in New York, the Nets hosted their seventh annual Evening of Chinese Culture in 2015. Reflecting the team's enthusiasm and exploring more business opportunities with the rising capital of Beijing. A partnership that also highlights the fact that the city can host all sorts of international sports. From biking to ice skating to skiing and a variety of other performances. In 2014, a French production company called La Machine brought a stage show featuring Long Ma, a 46-ton fire-breathing Chinese dragon horse, to Beijing's National Stadium to celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations between France and China. Every one of us is so impressed by China. Because, you know, China, in our mind, is a myth, a legend. So we were very happy to be here, to play for Chinese people. The media is really special to us. From catching an NBA game, to studying Chinese, to setting up a business, or simply shopping and exploring, there is so much to do in Beijing. And the recent 72-hour visa-free transit policy now makes it much easier to experience this amazing city. The policy of visa-free access of 72 hours is an excellent policy. Benefiting passengers passing through Beijing. Offering a good opportunity for them to tour around Beijing and get to know the city. After all, we will greatly promote the policy to let more people enjoy it. As the economical, political, and cultural center of China, Beijing always hosts all kinds of activities and events. We largely encourage tourists who travel to other parts of Asia also to stop by Beijing to get them to know the city and always welcome them back for further experiences in the future. Beijing is truly a global city. A city that has become a symbol of China's emergence as an economic powerhouse. A city where East meets West and cultures combine. A city that deserves to be celebrated and given a closer look.